Mistral has just released their own CLI. This is an open source AI powered command line coding assistant that lets you interact with your entire code base using natural language. It's like having an expert developer who understands your project's architecture, can read and modify multiple files simultaneously, execute commands and make intelligent decisions about code changes right in your terminal. In this video, we are going to install it and I will be showing you how to use it for free and easily on a real world use case. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. Please like the video and subscribe and consider becoming a member as that helps a lot. If you're looking for AI updates without any fluff and hype, please follow me on X as that helps a lot. So. Today, we already have covered the DevStroll 2 model which Mistral has released. Plus, they have released this DevStroll Big Brother which you can access through API for free. And I will be using that new DevStroll 2 model with this Mistral Vibe CLI. So, let's get started. I am going to use this Ubuntu system. And if you're looking to rent a GPU or VM or CPU on very affordable price, you can find the link to Mast Compute in video's description with a discount coupon code of 50% for a range of GPUs. So, please do check them out. Now, for the purpose of grabbing your API key for free, all you need to do is to just go to this console.mistral.ai, sign up with your email account and then from there you can go to this API key section and generate your API key and use this model and CLI for free for a limited time period. Installation of Mistral Vibe CLI is quite simple. All you need to do is to run this bash script or you can use pip or you can even install it. Um, from source it's quite easy but I'm just going to go with this uh, shell script so let's run this and it is installing everything and it's all done and you can see it was fairly quick and it is quite lightweight in typical mistral fashion and you can verify the installation by simply running wipe dash h it is going to show you the help menu with all the commands you can use with it and then you can simply launch this vibe by typing this vibe command. Now before I do that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you this real world application where I'm going to use this vibe to do a lot of things. So this is the structure of this real world application, which is a git, uh, git repo and that I already have created on my local system. So if you look at this code structure, let me just make it a bit bigger so that you could check out the fu full code structure here. Now, what this application is doing, it is a Node.js application that simulates a typical e-commerce or SaaS platform with a deliberately imperfect code base. And I have designed it to showcase all of these capabilities of this CLI. So it, it, this project includes API endpoint for user, products and orders, and a lot of other things. So I'm just going to uh, check out different, I will add the features, I will identify an intentional bug, and I will also refactor the code and also generate missing documentation for some of the service directory. So let's check it out. And by the way, this is what this code looks like in VS code if you are interested and we will be checking it out too. So I'm already in the root of that GitHub repo. From there, I'm just going to launch the vibe. You can just simply type vibe here and this is a Mistral vibe. Press enter, it's all terminal based. Now from there, you can just uh, select your preferred theme. I'll just go with the dark one. And now it is asking me for the API key, which I showed you earlier. So I already have grabbed my API key. Let me paste it here. And after entering the key, this is what it looks like. And then you can just ask it anything. Uh, for instance, let me first start by refactoring one of the file. So I'm asking you to refactor the process data function in source util data processor.js to use async await instead of promise constructor. And you see, this is my function at the moment and it is using promise here. So let's go back and then let me press enter. And it is thinking, it is using. 
And look, um, we know that there are a lot of CLI tools already out there. OpenAI, Codex, and Google, Jules, and a lot of stuff is already there. And this looks quite performant and similar, but I think the interface is quite interesting, especially I really like this thing. It is patching the data processor.js. It is calling that API. So let's wait for it to finish. And you can, it is asking for our prompt too. You can also just select it yes always. So maybe I'll just scroll down and I'll just enter this. It is going to refactor it now. They're not going to you know bother me again and again. It is applying the patch. Let's wait and we will check it out in the VS Code to see what it did. Now the cool thing is that it has applied it and now it is asking me it wants to test the changes by running the test file to make sure everything works perfect. Yes, why not? Let's do it. I'll just press on yes here because I haven't configured it. So I'm not expecting it to do, but anyway, and NPM is not installed. And it is asking me the, that it wants to do it. I'll just say, okay, fine, go, go for it. And now I'm just going to select always. So you see, it is not only identifying the issues, it is also rectifying them. And now it has refactored it properly. And it is not telling me what exactly it has done there. And I'm showing it to you raw. That is all done. Let's go to our VS Code. And there you go. Let me reload this. So this is a batch processor. This is the one. And it looks correct because you see, that before it used new promise, resolve and reject. And now it is using the async function with the wait new promise. Uh, it is quite clean async await syntax. And also the function is now returning the process data directly instead of wrapping it in resolve. It has also removed that reject parameter. So the refactoring is successful because it is more readable. It is modern JavaScript and uses the current best practices, which is async await over promise constructor. Okay. So that is good. Let's do another test now. And by the way, we also tested the other small dev stall model just a few hours ago. Today, uh, if you're looking to install it locally, uh, Apache 2 license, just watch this video, which I just released. Okay, so let's go back and now I'm going to check out the bug identification. So I'm just going to paste this here. I'm asking it that user is reporting. Okay, let me paste it properly. That user is reporting the login form crashes when email contains special characters. So let's run this to see what it does here. It is thinking. So it also uses chain of thought. Would be good to see some of that thinking here. Should be fun. It has found the bug. Exactly that was the one. How good is that? It has applied the patch. It is verifying it. Well done. It has already done done it. You see that it has identified that, which is quite cool. And it is again running the test. I'll just say, okay, fine. Go run the test if you can. And there you go. The fix and the change mode before, after. Amazing. Okay, that is awesome. And now let's add a feature here to this whole repo. So I'm asking you to add a rate limiting to all API endpoints with a configurable thresholds of 100 requests per minute. Create a middleware that can be applied to all endpoints. That should be fun. So let's wait for it. I'm actually quite impressed by the speed too, but the thing is it's not really sacrificing the speed for performance or other way around. I think it is striking a very good balance of both, which is crucial for um, the code. It is reading exactly. So it has went right into our source API folder and then it is creating a main API router. Loving it really. So you see that this is a router.js. It is creating a new file. I'll just go to API. It has just created this router file. Wow. And these are all the endpoints. This is writing the file. And I will just let it run so that you could just see the magic. And I'm not a Node.js developer per se, 
and but you can still see that I'm able to create this easily. Of course, we can run the test and all that stuff. So, and I really don't have to remember any um, syntax and stuff like that. And that is why I think that this sort of vibe coding, as they call it, or you know, coding with the help of AI, I think this is really, really going to enhance and democratize this whole development stuff. Okay, so let's wait for it to finish and then I'll show you. And there you go. So it has finished it and it is it has given us the summary too. And this is the rate limiting for all endpoints. And this is what it has done. There is a rate limiter dot js. Uh, sorry, what was the path? Uh, middleware rate limiter. So it has created a whole middleware here, which is really, really good stuff. And if I go to middleware, this is a rate limiter dot js. And this is what it has created, which looks spot on to me. And if you're a Node.js developer, uh, don't worry, but just tell me in the comments, what do you think about this? Really good stuff. And then it is talking about core implementation, what it has done in it, lot of configuration, just looks like API gateway to me. And then the whole key features here around IP based memory efficient, lot of files it has created config server.js amazing stuff and also there is a rate limiting md2 in the i think it is over here there you go the whole thing which i was reading through plus a lot of other things very very good detail around documentation so you can create a very fine documentation with it as you can see here it's just copy paste documentation nice okay now finally maybe let's also um, do the code migration so i'm asking you to convert all class components in this source component to functional components with hooks and i wanted to maintain the same functionality including life cycle method so we can just look at it here and see what it is doing and it will give us a fairly good idea how exactly it is going to convert the class component to a functional component and it is starting with the login form which i was expecting it to do and there are some issues because it doesn't have the react import or the full class so it is patching it and this is really out of this world and now it is checking another one applied another block so in all the files it is doing the code migration so source component dashboard dot js so go to source and then from component dashboard it is already done it looks really spot on so look, i think this is really really impressive let me know what do you think about it i will drop the link to it in video's description again please follow me on x and please like the video and subscribe and consider becoming a member as that helps a lot thank you for all the support